Coming up. A lunatic smashes a pair of cheap garbage taillights. I shower myself with transmission fluid. I break more stuff. And I carry a ladder. Welcome back to the third installment of Project Dubai. It's been a while, but we are finally back on track with this fine automobile. To bring you up to date with what's been done to the car, we have to go back in time as I was working on it off and on between other projects. Shortly after receiving the car, I noticed that the electrics were acting funky, so I decided to check the batteries and found one of the two batteries to be completely dead. The 750L has a dual battery setup. The bottom battery is just a regular E38 battery that is connected to the starter and heating coils of the ECATs. The second battery sits in this elegantly designed swing out tray and serves to power the electrical system of the car and is directly connected to the alternator. This is the battery that's getting replaced. A bit later down the road, the bottom battery started acting up, so it too was replaced. Having a good pair of batteries is vital on this car and I didn't want to take any chances with the old ones. And that is done. Moving on to the engine bay. Now, I apologize for the sound here, but this was filmed last summer when I didn't know how to use a microphone. It gets better soon. See how old is this? Jeez, that's nasty. Okay, that's easier. I'm replacing spark plugs and distributor caps. There isn't much that I can show you here other than showing my hands deep into the engine bay accompanied by shouting and swearing. But somehow I managed to get to all of the plugs and even torque them to spec. Next up, distributor caps and rotors. That's done. I mentioned in part one there was an odd noise coming from the front of the engine. I needed to remove the belts and start spinning stuff to see what's causing the noise. As I was planning to replace the expansion tank, I removed the fan shroud for easier access. It comes. Look at this. This one is shot. The alternator is quiet. The power steering pump. The water pump feels fine. Oh, this one is actually good. So I believe this pulley here is the source of my unpleasant noise. Listen to this. That's shot. Then we have the AC compressor pulley. I don't know if you can hear that. But that's shot as well. So I'm going to remove the clutch, the pulley and replace the bearing. I'm removing the screw holding the clutch. Ooh, that's loose. Here you have to be careful not to drop the washers that set the gap between the clutch and the pulley. Now we need to remove the retaining clip and you probably won't be able to see anything. Yes. It's the clip removed. Ideally you want to use a puller to remove the pulley, but since it can't fit in here, I'm carefully prying it off. <coughs> Yay. My plan here was just to replace the bad bearing since it's cheap and easy to do but this friction surface or whatever it's called was damaged so the whole pulley needed to be replaced. I searched everywhere and I couldn't find new pulley being sold separately. So I went for a good used one on which I knocked out the old bearing and tapped the new one in. There we go. Here's the new bearing. The new bearing is in, looking pretty. 
Now I have to repaint this because it looks really ugly. Then the clutch goes back and the screw with a bit of thread locker applied. One quiet pulley. The bad idler pulley is also replaced. A new one going in. New belt. New belt installed. Perfect. I'll be servicing the cooling system in the future episodes, so I'll go more in depth then. But for now, I got a new overflow hose, expansion tank and the cap. As part of preventative maintenance, I'm also replacing the fan clutch since these are known to fail due to age. A bit cleaner. Here's the new fan clutch. Also OEM Hella, bare. Wow, from the first. Doo -doo -doo. Upon starting the car, it was evident that the noise was still present. Now that my ear was closer to it, the noise was coming from the power steering pump. Belt removed, no noise. So onwards with the removal of the pump. Yes. Here's the offending article, and here's the refurbished one. Now I need to transfer the pulley to the new one. There it is. There it is. These I will talk down once they are in the car. The new pump installed but the same noise was still there and I found it unlikely that it would be defective straight out of the box. I decided to look into how they deleted the hydraulic self-leveling suspension that this car used to have and to no surprise I discovered it was done incorrectly. There is a line going from the pump to the rear of the car to feed the SLS but once that is deleted a loop in the system needs to be created somewhere. The typical location is at the connections behind the front left wheel but some genius decided to use the redundant regulator valve in the rear to loop the system which simply cannot work when the rest of the hydraulic system that it's meant to regulate is disconnected. As soon as I looped the system properly behind the left wheel using a simple brake line, the power steering pump stopped complaining and the noise was gone. So as it turns out, I didn't have to waste money on a new pump. There are words to describe previous mechanics of this car. Words I can't say here. With that finally sorted, I'm tackling the fuel filter. <laughs> Oops. That is job done. This was the original filter. It was never replaced. Look at the fuel that's coming out. Look at the color of it. That's black. And if I do it here, it's obviously doing its job and cleaning the fuel. Properly disgusting and the car benefited greatly from this as I could immediately notice the engine running much better. As shown in part 1, the rear brakes were toast and needed to be replaced. I went with OEM parts. I recently did a video of rear brake replacement on my M5 and as the procedure is the same, I'm not going to cover it here and move on to other fun stuff. Like this disintegrating hood insulation. I'm removing it and throwing it into the garbage. I'm wearing a protective mask as a lot of dust and crap was coming out of this thing. This was way before pandemic happened when you could actually buy such things. 
I'm using an all-purpose cleaner to clean the hood and lower part of the insulation. Shockingly filthy air filters are replaced. Also the broken plastic prong that opens the flap to let the air into the cabin. And finally replacement insulation, used but thoroughly cleaned and made to look like new. Pretty satisfying result. The majority of things that we're doing in this episode are in preparation for German TÜV. With that in mind, I had to get new tires as the old ones were ready to be recycled. I got Continental Premium Contact 6 tires. The 750IL was delivered with them back in the day. I loaded up my Chariot that doesn't have rear folding seats with 8 tires and bumbled my way to the tire shop. And that's the tires checked off the list. If you watched the second part of this series, you'd think we are done with suspension, but nine. Now that I have a proper lift, I can see things that I didn't see before. Like these cracked bushings in the rear swing arms. This would be a failure point during the inspection, so I had to replace them. However, BMW doesn't sell them separately. Only the complete swing arm, but luckily replacement bushings can be found online, so the old ones need to be pressed out and new ones pressed in. First, we need to mark the position of the eccentric bolt for alignment purposes. Unbolt the sway bar link. Okay. Then loosen the giant nut. Now I can remove nuts and bolts holding the bushings. Jesus. There it is. One bolt removed. Nice. There it is. There is no specific tool for this job. I just have a generic bushing pressing tool from eBay, which is not ideal, but it got the job done. Andale! And that's one removed. Then the new one goes in. And the bushing is perfectly in. Now the bigger bushing which is marked before removal so that the new one can be installed in the same position. It is out. So here's the new one. You can see that it has a recess alongside it which is why I marked its position. In order to install it, it needs to be compressed with two hose clamps. Yes! It's perfect. Finally! Where is the nut? There it is. Yes! The nut! These bushings are only lightly tightened as the final torque is done with the car on the ground. And then copy paste on the other side except my tool let me down. Yep, that happened. Anyway, I had to get a new threaded rod and I was able to finish this job. The car is lowered to the ground, moved back and forth, and then the final torque of the bushings can be done. Yeah. 
done. Next task. There was an awful screeching type noise coming from the transmission every time you start the car cold. Upon second try, the noise was not present, so it was time to service this transmission. I bought a ZF service kit that comes with everything you need for this job, including printed out instructions. First, I'm removing the fill plug. Okay. Oh my god, that's disgusting. Drain plug. Oops, there it is. While that is still draining, I'm going to start loosening the pan bolts. That's one. I stripped two of the Torx bolts. In this case, they are easily removable by hammering 11 millimeter socket or spanner over the head of the bolt. Ah, right into my shirt. Oops. Ah, yes, a whiff of slightly burned transmission fluid. Official woman repellent since 1940. The filter is from September 1997. Uh, excellent god damn it yep that went according to the plan there are no metal flakes anywhere here's the magnet you can see that it's a bit sludgy it has some wear on it but that's i guess normal i then cleaned the pan installed new magnet and the gasket so I'm securing it in place with zip ties for easier assembly. It comes in your filter. Once I reinstalled most of the bolts, I cut and removed zip ties. Torque for these is 10 millimeters. And that's it. All of them are torqued. Then fill it with fluid until it starts coming out and reinstall the plug. No. Yep, that's full. All right, so the laptop is connected and you can read the gearbox temperature. Now we need to start the car. All right, turn on the headlights, AC. This. Now we need to shift through the gears. Foot on the brake and we're gonna hold three seconds in each gear up to third gear. One. Manual. Hold it in first. At temperature between 30 and 35 degrees Celsius, the fill plug needs to be opened. If fluid comes out, it's overfilled. If nothing comes out, the level is low. Nothing, so I need to add. I slowly add more fluid until it emerges from the hole, let it drip out and refit the plug, which is torqued to 100 Nm. Job done. Since then, the transmission is shifting even smoother and the noise is completely gone. No noise! After doing another once over, I found yet another defect. Cracked flex disc. Enough to fail the inspection, so onwards with the repair, which involves dropping the entire exhaust. First, I'm disconnecting and labeling 156 oxygen sensors that this car has. Give or take 150. I've never seen a car with so much wiring around the cats. Then removing the exhaust bolts.
All of them came out trouble free. Benefits of having a rust free car are one of the main reasons why I went out of my way to get this E38. I'm supporting the exhaust in the middle. There it is. And removing stuff holding the rear mufflers. <laughs> ha ha! I have a plan. Let's see if it doesn't end up with entire exhaust landing on my head. All right, time to lower it gingerly. That's the exhaust lowered. I think I can get away if I just push it to the side. <coughs> Very goodly. See, four post has its advantages. This would have been much harder on a two post lift, but here, I was able to do everything on my own. Now I need to remove the heat shield. <coughs> Here we have a prize. That actually doesn't look too bad. The flex disc. Hardy Scheibe. That thing is toast. Then I support the gearbox in order to remove the cross member. I'm marking the position of the drive shaft and loosening bolts. And there is hardy scheibe. It's garbage. Ah, oh, the bearing is shot. Yeah, it needs to be replaced. <coughs> the car had a strange high pitch sound at certain speeds when driving, and I'm pretty sure I found a culprit. Not a very good noise. So I'm also replacing the center support bearing. I was planning to do this anyway since I had to remove the drive shaft. Finally! Push the bolt. Now we need to remove this. I'm cutting off the metal part so I can position the puller easier to remove the bearing. One rune bearing removed. Here we have new and old parts. The new bearing is carefully tapped into place with the correct size deep socket. Perfect. So I'm going to use medium strength thread locker. Perfect. The flex disc goes in paying attention to its direction as it's easier to torque it on the ground. Now I'm going to apply the thread locker. Repair manual explicitly says to torque by the nut and not the bolt. Diff input flange and CV joint are packed with fresh grease and a new gasket. Here comes the drive shaft. Oh, it's in. So torque for these is 64 newton meters, but there's absolutely no chance for a torque wrench to fit in here. So I'm just going with good and tight. So as soon as I start making bad pour noises, that's my torque. For the flex disc, I'm also going by feel as the torque wrench can't fit. As soon as I start feeling like something's about to break, like my arm or the spanner, I stop. 
All right. All right, now I can lower the transmission. The center support bearing is preloaded by pushing it forward two to four millimeters and then it's tightened. A clean heat shield goes back, new exhaust pipe gasket, then the exhaust is bolted back. And new bolts and copper nuts used. Done. Now we are going to replace the holder for the license plates. Because we're in Germany, we need the one that can accommodate the European plates. So I was lucky enough to find one in exact same color, in really nice condition, so I just polished it, and now I'm going to put it on the car. Yay. Off it comes. Lovely. These are Depot or Depot or how you want to pronounce it, Chinese taillights. And today I'm going to review them. I'm going to show you all of their quirks and features, take you on a tour and f it. Where's my hammer? Come back. And I have something else in mind for this one. Give me a few. Ooh, that was strangely satisfying. Man, I wish I had more. Very nice. Service your band there properly, yeah? Good. Moving along to the good stuff. It's not broken enough. Okay, I don't want to break my left. Right. Now, the good stuff, brand new taillights, original, from B&W, they're really pretty. The old ones are really tired with faded and damaged plastic and dirt embedded from the inside. Yes. Mighty fine looking rear end. And we are going to wrap up the third part here. In the next episode, I'll continue preparing the car for German tooth inspection and complete remaining tasks such as headlights, airbag light, removing the tint, fixing up the interior, and finally take the car for inspection. There are also two new projects coming up. E46 325i Touring Very good And a very special E60 M5 So stay tuned As always, thank you so much for watching And consider supporting the channel by subscribing to it I'll see you in the next one